for this project I started with a 33 by 25 inch framed mirror. I flipped it over, I took the screws out of the back, I took the backing off, I took the mirror out, and then I painted it with a DIY paint product, and I believe it was called Farm Fresh, the color. After I was done giving it two coats, I then put a top coat on, and this is also a DIY product. It's called Big Top After Show. It's a furniture finish, and you only need one coat of it, and it takes about a half hour to dry. It's real simple to put on, and it gives the the paint a little bit of a gloss After that finish. was dry I cleaned up the mirror and then flipped the frame over and put Elmer's glue around the back of the perimeter of the frame where the glass would sit and then I replaced the glass and then I put another layer of glue around the perimeter in the kind of the crease or the crack where um, resin would be able to seep through. So this serves two purposes. One, it holds the mirror in place, and two, it helps to prevent any resin leaks once you put resin on the other side. So after I um, finished putting all the glue on, I took some very heavy glass and set it on it just so that it would push the mirror down and um, hopefully adhere it better. So the glue needs to dry overnight, possibly up to 24 hours, depending on how much glue you use. Then I took painter's tape and put it around the perimeter just as an extra precaution against resin leaks. And then I put the backing back on. I screwed it back on. Next, I went to the computer and searched free clip art flamingo. And I printed up a picture of a flamingo. I put carbon paper under it. And then I went ahead and I traced out the flamingo. So I'm just using this as a template. And, you know, I'm not using any of the coloring or it kind of looks like a cartoon flamingo. So I don't really want that eye or anything. Now, the only thing I do different as far as the carbon paper goes is I would use a lighter color because I was in, having a very difficult time covering up the uh, dark blue carbon um, that had transferred onto the mirror. So that would be my suggestion, a lighter color or something that's the same color as the paint that you're using. And then I started to paint. Uh, what I did to prepare for this was I watched about eight different <laughs> YouTube videos about how to paint a flamingo. And I kind of used parts from uh, several different videos and kind of came up with my own little um, flamingo. And painting on glass can be more difficult than canvas because you have to give it many, many coats before um, it really looks right. And you have to let the coat before dry thoroughly or you'll be picking up the paint um, down to the mirror if you don't. You can see on that actually on the face that I was painting, I was uh, some of the paint came back up. But anyway, um, so I did it a really bright pink and uh, I had to give this about four or five coats just to make it the right color so that it was dark enough. After I was satisfied with the color and the coverage, I started painting on the feathers. And in the majority of the tutorials, they did start out with a dark color and then started doing feathers lighter and lighter and just kept on adding and adding to it. And that's exactly what I did. And um, the part that I had the most problem with as far as covering up the uh, lines from the carbon paper was on the legs and you'll see me going with the razor blade over some of the legs removing the paint in that carbon line because I just couldn't cover it up and it looked funny so um, <clears throat> I ended up taking a little bit off and then having to repaint it so like I said my suggestion would be if you use carbon paper to um, draw the flamingo or whatever you're drawing on use a lighter color carbon paper or a color that's close to the bird that you're, or the item that you're drawing. Because I used black carb or navy blue carbon paper, and in my package that I got from Amazon, I actually got multiple colors, and one was a red, and that's the color I probably should have used. And I tell you, like I said, I learned how to do this on YouTube. There are tons of painting tutorials on anything that you want to paint. And I really 
am not a painter, but I can follow, you know, simple instructions as far as uh, painting. And like I said, I did watch, I don't know, six to eight videos, different videos on how to paint a flamingo. And uh, this is what I did. So I just went ahead and kept on painting until I felt like I was happy with the outcome of it. So after I clean up the glass, I take some crushed shells and put them along the bottom of the mirror. And then I take some tempered glass that I've tumbled. This tempered glass was a, actually a boat windshield that somebody gave me. And it's kind of a pretty blue color. And um, after I smashed it up, or I should say after my husband smashed it up, it's kind of a long story. I'll tell I'll tell you in the end, but um, I ended up putting it in my tumbler, and it really turned out pretty. Now here I'm spreading all this blue out, but then I decide I don't want that much blue or that much glass on it, and I decide that it would be easier to put the resin down first and then put the glass on top of it. So I end up taking all the glass back off of it, or most of the glass back off of it. Next, I bring it into the other room for the resin. The resin I'm using for this project is Art Resin. It's a one-to-one -one ratio resin, one part resin to one part hardener. When I use resin, I wear gloves. I use a respirator. You're supposed to do it in a well-ventilated area. You pour equal amounts of resin and hardener into the cup. You stir it for three minutes. When you first put it in, it's clear, then it becomes cloudy, and after about three minutes of stirring, it becomes clear again. The slower you mix it, the less bubbles you'll get. You're supposed to scrape the sides and the bottom as you're mixing it to assure thorough mixing. When I was done mixing it, I started pouring it over the shells first and the glass, and then I dripped it around the perimeter of the frame and into the middle and then I smoothed it up with my hand. Then I used a baby wipe and cleaned up the frame. I had gotten some of the resin on the frame and then I used the little kitchen torch to get the bubbles out and I had to do this several times. Then I took the glass, the tempered glass that I had tumbled that turned out to be such a pretty blue and I kind of sprinkled that around and that's to simulate the water and you can't see the foot of the one foot of the flamingo because it's supposed to be underwater usually they're wading in the water and that's why their legs are so long I was reading up on them and I guess um, that way they can go out further in the water and because that's where they find more of their food and their beak actually acts as a scoop to get the food out of the water. And next I have some more glass, but this is kind of a sparkly silver glass that I picked up from Michael's. And um, it's called Ashland Decorative Glass. And they have this in all different colors up at Michael's. And I just sprinkled that around the top. And I kind of went over the shells a little bit more with some resin. And as you see, I put some seashells and starfish at the bottom also. And I just wanted to make sure that those shells down there were holding on good. I didn't want any of them to fall off. And then when you're done with your project, it has to sit overnight. It temperatures between 72 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's in your best interest to have it on a level, level surface and to cover it so that nothing gets in it. Hey everyone, all finished. So I thought this would be something different um, with the painting on there. And I tried my best with the painting. I know it's not perfect, but um, just if you guys are good painters, imagine what you could paint on there. Anyway, I thought it was cute. And if I had to do it again, this glass here is such a light blue. It's really um, hard to see, almost hard to see the difference between this and this. I can see it a little bit uh, better when you're up close. But anyway, all in all, I think it turned out cute. In this mirror, <laughs> when we uh, lived over on Cocoa Beach, we moved into a house over there about 10 years ago, and this mirror was on the wall. There was two mirrors that they left on the wall one big round one, which eventually fell off the wall and broke, and this one here. And um, I really didn't have anywhere to hang it up when I moved in, but I hung on to it. I don't know why. And uh, anyway, it worked out good. <laughs> so I wanted to tell you about this glass. 
So this is actually tempered glass. And this glass, someone gave us a windshield. It's a boat windshield. And um, I had been corresponding with somebody on how to break and, and watching YouTube videos, how to break up tempered glass. And um, this one lady said what she does is she puts contact paper on it and then hits it on the corner and then, you know, the whole thing shatters, but the contact paper holds it together. And I guess she does mosaics and then she cuts out whatever shape or size she wants, uh, you know, onto the contact paper and lifts it up. And so I was going to try that. And um, <laughs> my husband came in the door and he goes, from the garage, he goes, so where do you want me to put all the glass? I said, what do you mean? He says, well, I broke it up for you. <laughs> and I hadn't gotten the contact paper yet. I sent away for it from Amazon. I said, you did what? <laughs> so anyway, um, hopefully I'll get another piece of tempered glass and I'll try that with it. So I thought um, as long as I had all that tempered glass, I would try to um, tumble it. And I mean, it turned out such a pretty blue. It really is pretty. But the weird thing about it is I thought that tempered glass was kind of like the glass that you get for the, you know, the fire glass. And if I'm to reach my hand into fire glass and grab it, you don't cut yourself or hurt yourself. But that tempered glass really had some uh, sharp edges and he had smashed it right in the middle and in the middle where he smashed it, there was some long shards of glass and I didn't think it was supposed to break up like that. The rest of it pretty much broke up like tempered glass, but the tempered glass was still sharp. You could cut yourself from it. So um, I'm gonna see, uh, you know, if anybody has any experience with tempered glass, is that how it is? And um, I'll video the, <laughs> I'll video it the next time it gets broke up. Anyway, um, I wanted to show you what I got at garage sales. If you want to follow me out to the garage, I'll show you. I got a couple good deals. So this is all my projects stacked up over here. I don't know how well you can see them. Let me bring the camera over. I've got all these windows and mirrors and different things stacked up. Anyway, so this weekend when I was at the garage sale, I got these, two of these. These are really dirty, I need to clean them up. But I thought they looked so cool. Two pieces of wood like this, uh, a dollar each. I'm sure they were probably just gonna throw them out or something, but um, so I thought I could paint something or do some kind of glass, glass work on it. This camera's kind of slipping down. Let me put it up there. <laughs> And then I got this, and I gotta be careful with it because the glass isn't being held in there. This is about the same size as the mirror that I did the uh, flamingo on. It's about 35 by, or 33 by 25. It's not a mirror, it's just glass with the frame, but it was two bucks. So that was a really good deal. And then the third thing I got, I gotta be careful with this, glass is coming right out of it. Got to hurry up and glue that in. And then the other thing I got, this is the best deal, was um, five bucks, this great big window. It's filthy and I got to clean it, but for five dollars, and look at the saying at the bottom, that's kind of cute. Um, yeah, because I've been getting my windows around the corner at this little shop and they're $25 a piece. I have gotten some from garage sales for cheaper. I think five bucks is about the cheapest, uh, but I was paying uh, $25. So I don't know why I bought those ahead of time. I should have waited. But anyway, <laughs> those were my good deals. Um, the, the frame, the window, and those two pieces of wood. And I've been real fussy lately as far as getting uh, stuff from garage sales because I have so much stuff and so if it's a really good deal real cheap then I'll get it but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up that helps the channel and if you want to be notified of future videos subscribe and you'll be notified and I hope you all have a great day thanks for watching